So I'm here with curvy, nerdy girl next door, smut creator, Bay York, known for her award-nominated, bodacious TNA, infectious laugh, sense of humor and style with her eclectic clothing and shoe collection. Her fans around the world enjoy her nude photos and over 400 homemade solo and girl-girl adult clips. How are you doing today? Good. How about you? Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, start off, where, where are you from? I'm from Seattle. Okay. Uh, Seattle, uh, what was it like growing up in Seattle? Uh, well, I'm originally from San Francisco, but okay. I've been in Seattle for about a decade now. Okay. I'll but... <laughs> what was it like growing up in uh, San Francisco? It was, it's definitely different than how it is now. Um, but it was, it was really nice. I mean, I've always been quite partial to the West Coast. Yeah, I love it. I've spent a lot of time uh, in Petaluma. And uh, like, I really enjoy like, you know, uh, Northern California is really, is really nice and stuff. Everything like, you know, doing shrooms and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty uh, different, like, you know, uh, environment. I think like, you know, it's, it's a really liberal place and stuff, everything like, you know, but uh, a lot of fun. Was that how yeah. it it, it definitely has its own like like mindset when when you're out in the West Coast. For sure. Um, so, uh, growing up, when did you realize you wanted to pursue a career in the adult industry? Uh, actually, only about five years ago. What was it that uh, sparked you know your interest in that? Were you always like a sexually curious person, or like you know uh, you just wanted to try something new, or? Uh, actually, yeah, a little bit of that. Um, I've always been kind of, kind of open and, and, mm, you know, down to explore, but I didn't really have like a, a way or a method to, to really like showcase that. And so I started out like almost exactly five years ago, um, posting on Reddit and it kind of just grew into well where I am now oh so you would do a uh, post on reddit and then it just like you know grew into like camming or how out of it yeah so um I mean I started off like many people <laughs> um <laughs> selling panties mm -hmm. um and a lot of uh just building up an audience was um gone wild posting as they call it but just posting nudes um, and just having a lot of fun with it. Um, and from there, you know, you get more, more inquiries about like other things that you, you do um, and building up like a, a really, really great fan base. Um, I definitely have people that have been following me since, since I very, like the first, first start. Um, but yeah, just letting it uh, grow and exploring new things within the adult adult industry as you become more and more established. That's really interesting because I see those ads online all the time about like girls selling their panties and stuff or anything. How much did you uh, start off selling your panties for? <laughs> I hate admitting it. Um, my very first, I started off, it was like only $20. Okay. And um that's cool and stuff and everything. And then like, I, I guess like you would get like, you know, inquiries and uh, like, you know, to do videos and solos and stuff like that. And, um, you know, did, like uh, OnlyFans and, you know, mini vids and stuff and everything, like how long before you were doing videos on there? Um, I would say it was about a year and a half, maybe almost two years before I started on many vids. Um, I had already like built up a very small catalog just doing like custom videos and things. Um, so it, don't, it was, it was pr a good amount of time, but it was still like over three years ago. Um, and then OnlyFans, I only started just now over a year. I just celebrated one year anniversary um, last week um, just because of, well, I mean, it's so popular right now. Right, and uh, what's uh, like your niche type of videos? Um, it's kind of all over the place. Like I either do, of course I, I do solo and, and girl girl content and it's very kind of um, like vanilla, very, very fun and lighthearted. 
But then also, I, one of the things I really love doing um, in my custom videos is exploring all sorts of kinks. So I've done lots of things from jerk off instructions to like, like very humiliating dominatrix type stuff to to some more more unique stuff. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I was uh, watching your YouTube and I saw uh, your role play is Velma. And I um, <laughs> was reading your bio, you have uh, quite a shoe collection as well. So I was wondering, have you seen the Givenchy shoes that look like uh, Scooby-Doo paws? That's... I actually haven't. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, so it's these Givenchy shoes and I guess like everyone was saying they look like uh, Scooby-Doo paws. It was pretty interesting. You should check it out. Um, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to Google that. For sure. Uh, so I noticed that you're a fan of uh, Tom Clancy. What's uh, one of your your favorite books that he wrote? Um, I'm probably going to go with the first one that I, well, I can't say that I read. It was an audio book because um, I had a long road trip, but it was Threat Vector. Um, it was one of, the, it's probably, it's one of the newer ones. Um, and I really like the, the um, storyline with Jack Ryan Jr. Um, over like <laughs> traditional Jack Ryan, um, just because I, I, I think he's a little more fun and, and a little bit more flashy um, in comparison to Jack Ryan's character. Definitely. Uh, if you could have sex with any uh, historical figure, fictional uh, character, who would it be? Ooh, that one's tough. Cause like, I mean, honestly, so many. <laughs> um, I wouldn't know where to begin. Um, maybe Cleopatra. <laughs> well, that's a good choice and stuff and everything. Yeah, I love uh, ancient Egypt and stuff. Such a such a uh, interesting um, history. Like you know, uh, what do you plan to do in the future? Like you know, because I've seen some videos and stuff and everything. I really uh, think like you know you have a, a really great creativity and uh, as far as like you know sex machines and things like that like you know uh, what are some things that you hope to do in the future that you haven't done yet um let's see that i haven't done yet um i want to say get better at what i do um i'd love to be able to get more creative um, one of the things I would love to do is have like more in depth cosplays, but um, they're really hard because um, I mean, you either buy a very, very expensive cosplay outfit or you design it yourself. And given my body type, I'd most likely have to t like deal with the latter. And I'm not that talented when it comes to like sewing and creating stuff. Um, but that would be something that I would want to do is like, cause there's so many great creators that do amazing cosplay videos. Ugh, I, I just wish. <laughs> uh, who, who are the, some of the characters that you would like to uh, portray through cosplay if you had the opportunity? Um, let's see, that one's, <laughs> that one's really tough. I would like, like to do more, more Velma, but like a little better, um, tailored outfit that's just kind of a little sexier. Um, I would also, let's see, I don't know, it's, now that I'm put on the spot, I can't think of anyone else. Um, but, uh, let's see, I probably want to do, like, a, a better Silk Spectre, um, maybe just, you know, anything. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, how do you balance, like, you know, as far as, like, your work life and, you know, your professional life? Because I imagine you have, like, a lot of demands and stuff and everything because you've put out, like, a lot of content in a, in a short period of time. Well, I um, barely leave the house in the past six months, so right. that one definitely contributes. <laughs> um, but it's really just setting like setting aside time. I'm honestly a workaholic and it's been quite the challenge um, for me to just like commit to at least like a half a day off to just play Animal Crossing or a full day off play, playing Animal Crossing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just writing lots of scheduling for myself um, and days that I'll do this or that um, and hopefully keeping it all organized, even though I'm terrible at that. 
Right. Uh, like, you know, the pandemic obviously has been going on and, you know, you talk about being in the house, uh, you know, how was your life before, you know, the pandemic? Did you <laughs> that one hurts. <laughs> um, so I love to travel a lot. Um, I usually would like plan a trip maybe even once a month. So of course, since March, anything that I had planned or even booked already, of course, did not happen. Um, and I also... <laughs> I guess it sounds pretty pretty sad in hindsight, but I love just eating out and shopping, yeah. um, which is what I did if I wasn't traveling or if I was. Um, so it was kind of adjusting to to not being able to do those things and just kind of throw myself into work to compensate. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, you know, I've, that's one of the things and stuff that I've kind of gone through is like, I'm really used to like going out and like going out to restaurants and stuff, everything. And then you read like, oh, like even though restaurants are, are open, like you shouldn't go, it was not really a safe thing to do. Uh, but like, you know, uh, I don't really believe in like living in fear, you know, and stuff, everything. Do you feel like, you know, how, how often do you go out? Like, you know, uh, if you want to do something, because obviously you got to do grocery shopping, I imagine, and things of, of that nature. I mean, it's surprising how much you can order in every day. <laughs> That's true. Um, I don't actually go grocery shopping that often um, because I mostly Uber Eats, but I do try and go out a little bit more. Maybe not once a week, maybe maybe every other week, if that. To just, I don't know. It's it's really fine balance of being as safe as you possibly can, but also you these businesses need need the support and the help and just like your presence to you know i guess put money back into for the into the economy right uh you talk about the economy uh like you know as far as like you know uh creating work online did you see a boom and like you know as far as your videos being bought like you know because of the pandemic um i can't say a hundred percent that it is because of the pandemic, but I did notice um, platforms like like um, OnlyFans and my video sales did go up overall. I don't know if it's because I was consistently creating like like amped up my content and my my the things I was producing, or if it was because of OnlyFans becoming super popular and almost mainstream. Um, or if, you know, people really are just at home and stuck and, and trying to find some sort of release or balance. On the other side of that, there are still like tons of people that can't, um, you know, um, enjoy porn as they used to um, because now they're stuck at home with, you know, everyone else that's at home. So <laughs> I think there was a give and take there. For sure. Uh Thank you, uh, Bay York, for uh, taking the time. I really appreciate you. Uh, where can people follow you on social media? Um, so uh, the best places would be Instagram or Twitter. Um, and that's at you, B York, um, B-E-A-Y-O-R-K. Um, the U's in there because I started out on Reddit and my username is you, uh, B York. So um, Reddit would be the other place, which is reddit.com slash you slash New York. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.